All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. People uh, may or may not join. This might be a little bit shortened meeting, uh, only because I had a last minute change uh, to the agenda. And when I'm talking like last minute, I'm talking with uh, six minutes ago, uh, our presenter, uh, Forrest from Think Twice, uh, just sent me this picture. Uh, so he is a brand new father. So that's why he's not going to be here presenting because there, uh, this was like, like I said, six minutes ago, he sent me this picture and uh, said, sorry, he's not going to be able to make it to the meeting today. So I'll try to give a, a little bit of a, the update best I can from uh, the information that Forrest has sent me related to Think Twice. Um, so, but first uh, let's go around. We'll just uh, do quick introductions, updates on you or your organization, what's going on. Um, and uh, we'll start with uh, Dodd. He was first in. Good morning. Uh, not a whole lot new with my organization. I guess we're still uh, rolling along, doing everything that we need. We've had a lot of... Uh, our firefighters out with COVID or close contact with COVID. So we've been kind of shorthanded a few times, but uh, still pouring along, uh, gearing up for uh, wildland season, which after March, of course, uh, uh, open burning starts. And that's when we consider the start of our wildland season. Um, I have been uh, very busy uh, inspecting uh, marijuana facilities, it seems like, uh, probably about four or five a week, it seems like lately. Um, so they're busy and they're making a lot of money. And uh, I've been asking a lot of questions and uh, trying to learn more. But that's that's about all we got going on. What's been one of the most surprising things that you have learned? <clears throat> um, of how, how it actually... Uh, the THC and stuff becomes active in marijuana and uh, how they regulate it and figure out how much they can sell and, and everything else like that. It's, it's, it's information I think the public should really know. I was concerned because I'd gone in a couple of grow houses and it's just the funk in there is so heavy when you're around that many plants and you spend a, a, a 45 minutes to an hour in one of those places and you come out of there smelling like it. And you wonder if you're going to have any side effects from it. And <laughs> actually, the, the thing I learned was that it actually has to be above, has to be brought up to above 300 degrees in order for the THC to be active in it. And that's when they, uh, it becomes active. But other than that, it's, it's just basically benign. So like if, if an animal or something were to eat the, the raw flower, nothing would become of it. So it, that was one thing I learned that was really important, I guess. I didn't know that either. That's that's very interesting. Um, Rolf. Well, I've been inactive. I've been down in Victor, Idaho, handling this with a family friend. Right. Well, I hope all is well. Um, other than that, um, let's see, uh, Sergeant Novak. Hey, good afternoon. How are you? I'm just trying to, uh, trying to stay alive and stay afloat. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And any updates, uh, with you or the uh, department? No, I don't believe so. I know um, uh, Kevin Dusko just sent over the uh, MHP annual report, I think. I haven't had a chance to click on it and open it up, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to get that information out to everybody here um, soon. But he just sent that over today. So I'll uh, dig through it and digest some of that uh, info. Yeah, there's a lot of data there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks for being here. Kevin. Hello. Yay, this is my third Zoom meeting of the morning. I'm <laughs> zooming out. Uh, Kevy Berger with Foundation for Community Health and Safe Kids, um, Missoula Coalition Coordinator, 
Um, let's see, exciting updates. Well, we opened our health grants program for high school seniors. So if you know any high school uh, seniors that are in Missoula County or Ravalli County, if they are interested in pursuing a health care related education um, or degree uh, on our website, and I'll drop it in the chat, uh, we have our applications open for those. Uh, we have $1,000 uh, scholarships and some premier scholarships of $2,500. So that's pretty exciting. And I think that's about it for today anyway. And uh, I was on one of your previous Zoom meetings, and then I sent Kevin an email and uh, related to uh, meeting for coffee. And I said, uh, I said, how about uh, Tuesday the 16th or Wednesday the 17th? She replies back with Tuesday the 16th. And I look at the calendar and I go, Tuesday's the 15th and Wednesday's the 16th. And she goes, I was just replying to you because I said, oh, I do that all the time. Like no big deal. And I was the one that did it. So, uh, <laughs> but I think we got it straight now. So uh, it's, it's been a fun morning. So, uh, Marie, how are you doing? Hello. I have, hi, I haven't been here for quite a while. I'm Marie. I work at St. Patrick's Hospital for trauma services. Um, something new with me is I'm actually transitioning out of my education and uh, injury prevention position. So um, I am actually transitioning. I'm going to stay with trauma, but I'm going into more of a PI coordinator position in data registry. So I will be working a lot more from home, which I'm excited about since I live in Polson. Sure. <laughs> I don't have to drive sure. to Missoula as much, which is fantastic. So yeah. And, uh, so then, then will we be expecting a, a different face uh, in our meetings? Will We're hoping. <laughs> We're hoping soon because I'm still doing all the education stuff too with my other job as well. Um, so hopefully, hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm really looking for somebody that uh, actually lives in the community and can be more part of all of the organizations with injury prevention. So. All right. Well, uh, once you get them on board or, or whatever, I'd love to, to meet with them and, and welcome them to the group. So. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. Well, good luck in your uh, new adventure. That's exciting. Thanks. Yeah. There's Holloway. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. Any, any okay. updates from you? Mm, nothing new. Road Court is alive and well. Thank you, Sam, for that great background. Other than that, no, we're here. Thank you. Except we have been doing great at pushing into municipal. We've been getting a ton more referrals, so it's really good to see the expansion in municipal and impacting a lot more people in that sense. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for setting me straight. <laughs> and and Sam, is that, is, that, is, that, is that also going to be your update too, or do you? Yep. Uh, yep. Just piggybacking right on top of that one. Excellent. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you too for both being here. I appreciate it. Sergeant Hebert. Morning, everybody. A um, couple things. We I've got a couple guys, myself and another officer, scheduled for uh, child safety seat tech a couple months, so we can maybe steal some thunder from the firefighters a little bit. Um, and it's getting nicer out, so our motorcycles are not too long away. So. All right. All right. All right. And I think we talked, I was uh, going the motorcycle route, but I had a motorcycle that um, needed at least three engines to make it to the 800 mile mark. So I got rid of that motorcycle um, because that wasn't going to work. Um, and so I'm not on a motorcycle anymore out there on the roadways, but I'm on what's called an electric unicycle. So um, if you ever get a chance to look one of these things up uh, and and it's it's absolutely crazy, but I'm still wearing full motorcycle gear, so maybe I'll see you out on the road. So if you see some weird guy riding on some sort of futuristic single wheel thing, um, it's me. I'll watch for you. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. We'll be safe out there. 
Steve, all I want to know is when we take the class, can I sit by the officers and cheat? I don't know about the cheating part, but <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I think uh, when we uh, get to Jennifer, if she has anything, she just recently got her CPS tech uh, recently. Actually, let's let's just go. I'll just toss it over to Jennifer right now. Um, Awesome. Thank you. Um, I did just get my certification here a couple of weeks ago at the Helena class and training, and it was really nice to sit down and be able to experience it. Um, you have quite the process ahead of you when you go to your training here in a couple of months. Um, I was surprised at how in-depth it actually is, how much work that the instructors put into it, and how much commitment level and learning that you have to do with that four-day class. And, all I can say is like what I looked at, I'm like, okay, how are we going to spend four days nonstop working on car seats and learning about the insulation for it? And by the end of it, I was like, I mean, I could use another four days. Like I'm not even, I feel like I don't even have my feet wet on it, but there's a lot to learn. You really do feel good after the class, but it's a great program that we have. And I'm glad that they're able to put that on and that you guys are able to join it and get the certification as well. Um, one other thing I kind of want to throw out there for everybody who's listening or that's interested, we do have our application process that we're starting to accept for fiscal year 2023 here at MDT. Um, applications are due to us by March 1st, so if anybody's looking at applying for any of those grants, please get that submitted and off to us here within the next couple of weeks. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here today. And uh, yeah, I think I felt the same exact way walking into my first CPS class in like four days. Like, what, what could you possibly teach me in four days? It's not going to be a repeat of the 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes over and over and over again. And then, yeah, at the end of the four days, you're like, I have no idea. Like, there's still so much more to learn on this. It's, it's amazing. So uh, it's a lot of fun. Glad to, glad to see uh, that we're going to get uh, a lot more techs here in uh, Missoula. And definitely with the officers, I mean, you're out there meeting people where they are and, and uh, have an opportunity, uh, you know, uh, on the side of the road to, to make an adjustment. And, and hopefully that would be a good opportunity for some excellent community oriented policing. So um, that's great. Uh, McKenna. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm McKenna. I am a senior at the University of Montana, and I am doing my internship this semester with Curry Health. Um, we Right now, I'm kind of just focusing on drinking and driving in fraternities and sororities. Um, I've been doing a needs assessment where we found that there has been an increase in the fraternities and sororities here. Um, and my boss recommended I come to this meeting today, and I'm happy to be here and learn from you all. Excellent. And I'm going to have some awesome information for you. Um, if you, uh, I'll present it during the meeting. And then afterwards, if you uh, want to meet again to talk a little bit more about it, um, we can definitely uh, chat. Um, but I think I got some good stuff for you that you might like. Um, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. And thank you for uh, working on the, uh, the DUI aspect of things. Uh, Jodine. Hello, everyone. Jodine with Compliance Monitoring Systems. Um, you know, we're just working hard. Uh, we're helping with the treatment courts in Great Falls and um, trying to get them set up with some new uh, testing. So that's been my concept. My bad. I hit the hit the wrong button there as I was trying to adjust something there. So anyway, awesome. well, I'm I'm good. Just staying busy. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, one of the biggest superheroes I've ever met in my entire life, uh, Virginia. Oh, no. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, well, um, I am totally boring. I, I think I'm going to wash my car today. I don't have anything, you know, exciting to report. You are the opposite of boring, Virginia. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I hope things go well with your car. And that's a that's probably a great idea. I probably should wash my car too. Um, Reagan. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, Reagan Meekham. I'm the Frenchtown Community Coalition Coordinator. Uh, I'm excited to see McKenna on here. I'm assuming she's a pro at Curry, and so it's cool to see a fellow pro on here. Um, not too much to report. Uh, we just came back from Washington, D.C. last Friday. We went to CADCA's National Leadership Forum. Um, I took six students and their advisor, and it was a ton of fun. We did a lot of learning, but we also did a lot of sightseeing in our free time. So that was fun. Um, April 7th, Laura Stack from Johnny's Ambassadors will be in Frenchtown. We're going to have like a parent and community presentation. I don't have times yet, but once I do, I'll send that to Steve and to share to the group and everyone's welcome to that. Um, her son died by suicide due to cannabis induced psychosis. And so it's definitely something everyone needs to hear um, considering everything that's going on. Um, and that's about it for me. Uh, Reagan, could you post uh, the FCC website uh, in the chat so people can check that out and maybe even the link to your Facebook page? Uh, I, I just I can't say enough great things about what Reagan is doing with FCC and with the kids in many of the other meetings, oftentimes um Reagan lets the kids do a report on what uh, the French Town Community Coalition and their uh, Youth Action Committee is doing out there. And they are doing some absolutely amazing stuff. Check out their website, connect with Reagan, uh, check out their Facebook page. Uh, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. She's doing some, some just amazing things out there. And uh, so great to have you here. Thanks. Thank you so much. That means a lot. You bet. Evan, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, I'm Evan Rosenberg. I'm a community advocate like Virginia. Um, I don't, my day job has nothing to do with this work, but um, I am happy to be here and it's been a while since I've been able to join. So I'm glad to re-engage and hear what's going on. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Thanks for being here. Uh, Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle Evans. I work for the State Crime Lab. Um, I don't really have any updates. We've just been really busy with a lot of cases coming in. Um, so that's that's keeping us going most of the time, but nothing really new other than that. Awesome. Well, thank you uh, for being here. And uh, I have all previous meetings that uh, just like this have been recorded and are up on the website, either under the DUI task force meetings or, or I should say, and under the BUMT or Buckle Up Montana uh, meetings on the Drive Safe Missoula website. So uh, not too long ago, Michelle gave uh, a presentation uh, about the crime lab and uh, some stats to us. It was really, really great. So um, if you didn't get a chance to see that, go back and watch that. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, so thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. This might be a little bit shorter of a meeting here today. Uh, than I was anticipating. Um, for those of you that have come on since I last said this initially, um, our presenter today, Forrest from Think Twice, uh, sent me uh, a text message um, just a little bit before the meeting. He said, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it to the meeting today. And then six minutes before the meeting, he says, this is why. So you can see he's a, he's a brand new dad uh, out in Seattle. So, uh, just had a little, little baby boy born, uh, or maybe it's a girl, Cora is her name. Um, you know, shortly before our meeting started here today. So he's not here to present to us about think twice. However, thankfully he did send uh, a lot of information to me via email before. Uh, so at least I can give sort of an update on where we're going, uh, and, where we've been with Think Twice. So uh, for those of you that don't know what Think Twice is, uh, and McKenna, this is the part of the website that you'll wanna write down and, and maybe go check out and visit. Um, so Think Twice, duiprevention.org. Uh, what, what they do and how we utilize them a lot is uh, with these individual breathalyzer straws. Uh, that we have right now in a variety of different locations uh, around Missoula. If you go to the Drive Safe Missoula website under DUI Task Force, the first thing you're going to come to 
Uh, let's see. And I don't think I have the ability to get it up on screen um, because I was not prepared for him to not be here. So, um, but on the DUI or on the uh, Drive Safe Missoula DUI task force, first one down is think twice. There I have listed all the different locations within Missoula that, that are utilizing the think twice straws, all the different bars and restaurants. Scroll down below that a little bit and you're going to see the bars and restaurants in the other counties from around the state. Um, there is, uh, let's see, we have uh, Gallatin County is absolutely blowing us out of the water, the number of establishments. Uh, Park County is on there and also Lewis and Clark County as well. Um, I have links to all the different bars here in Missoula. Um, and there's a little video to watch up at the top for you to check it out. Uh, it's absolutely great. So to give you kind of a, a report about where we've been and where we are and where we're going with Think Twice. So back in 2019, we decided to partner with Think Twice. It was actually my very first meeting uh, with the DUI task force in many years. Uh, I wasn't even on the payroll yet. Um, I think my official first day was like the next day, uh, but I showed up at the meeting and Forrest uh, was given a presentation on Think Twice, and I was blown away by it. In all my years in law enforcement, it, it was uh, just blew me away. Initially, I was very skeptical uh, because I, I had so many different questions. Uh, they had heard all the questions before. They answered all the questions perfectly uh, and made me feel really comfortable about it. And then I had hours of conversation with Forrest on, on the phone following that. Um, so the first participating bar here in Missoula was Red's Bar, and that was on July 15th, 2019. Um, and we paid, think twice, $1,000 out of our budget uh, for 22 media kits. Now, the media kits are kind of like what you see on screen. Um, these are the posters that are up around the different establishments and they have um, what they do is they'll, they'll put them in the in the bathrooms. Uh, so you can see like here's one on a door. Um, there'll be, uh, you know, someplace else in the establishment. They'll have the little uh, boxes uh, up on the uh, the counter. So they'll have, and I'm trying to look through all my different screens here to see if I have them, but uh, uh, I've deleted a lot of them because I wasn't prepared for him to not be here. Um, here's uh, somebody that works in one of the places and she's holding one of the boxes. She's also holding their logbook in, or their instant logbook. If there's anything that occurs, uh, if they uh, choose to not serve somebody because they already appear to be uh actually, obviously, are apparently intoxicated. Um, places will write down that incident in the logbook. Uh, if they have a situation where somebody under 21 is attempting to buy uh, or they have some other situation in their establishment, um, they can note that in the logbook. And that was all part of the media kits that we provided Think Twice uh, or that we paid Think Twice for and they gave to the establishments on behalf of the Missoula County DUI Task Force and Drive Safe Missoula. Um, then in December of that year, we gave them another thousand dollars and that paid for 17 boxes of breathalyzers. Um, and then uh, in 2020, we gave them another $2,300 uh, that provided 13 more boxes of breathalyzers, eight media kits and 20 install and service team trainings. Uh, so that's where Think Twice goes goes to the establishment and they actually train the staff on how to utilize these boxes uh, and these tools. So we've so far uh, given think twice about $4,366. Uh, that, that is funded 30 boxes, 30 media kits and 20 uh, service team trainings. Now here's the cool thing. So we started, we got the ball rolling by getting this going. And since then the participating locations have ordered an additional 1,440 individual straws themselves. Uh, so they're keeping the ball rolling from that initial uh, push to get this out there. So uh, it's been 
absolutely wonderful. And there's been a lot of, uh, or Think Twice has even done some free promotions with them because they continue to order the, the breathalyzers. Uh, and they've given away uh, up to a thousand breathalyzers uh, to these different establishments as well. Um, looking at, um, let's see, right now we have funds remaining with Think Twice of about uh, $1,400, $5 shy of $1,400. Uh, each new location that they go to, that they uh, get the posters up in, that they train their staff, uh, they get the uh, straws in, costs about $165 a piece. So we can onboard another 8.5 establishments here in Missoula County. So every time Forrest comes through, he typically meets, because um, he's got a, a place out on Placid Lake, uh, or family place out on Placid Lake that he goes to every once in a while. Uh, but he'll swing by, he'll stop at a couple places, and one or two new places hook up. Also, every single time I do the responsible alcohol sales and service training, uh, I'm talking about specifically the logbook uh, because it reduces liability for these different establishments. And then I share a little bit of information about the straws. And uh, even though we haven't had that many people taking the RAS course lately, um, because everybody's running through the same staff shortaging that every place is going through right now, um, the places that I talked to have uh, wanted to get involved with Think Twice. So that's really cool. But because of our initial uh, thumbs up on Think Twice here in Missoula County. We've, we were the ones that uh, initially brought them in and they've been able to spread now statewide. So most of my meetings that I attend on a statewide level, I'm talking about Think Twice. I'm talking about the advantages um, that uh, for the establishments, for the customers uh, and for our community by having these uh, breathalyzers uh, accessible in our community. So Pretty excited about that. Uh, Think Twice is right now going through the process of be, becoming what's considered a best practice. Um, there's, there's a big, huge process that goes into this, but a lot of the um, prevention specialists uh, that utilize different things uh, for education, they like to use things that are considered a best practice and they have to be tested and reviewed and analyzed and all sorts of different things. Well, uh, Think Twice has got that ball rolling already to become a best practice. Uh, and if that's the case, that will only help their expansion and to get this education out to more and more of our public. So very excited about that. I would love to get Think Twice back here sometime post pandemic. Uh, for like the winter brew fest that's coming up, for example, uh, which obviously we won't have them out there for that. Um, but to have them on site with their uh, breathalyzer tablets, uh, with their handheld breathalyzers, uh, talking to people, if you recall, but it was February 29th of 2020, right before the pandemic really hit. Uh, they, I think I think we just got a, the first few cases in the Seattle nursing homes uh, when they were here because we were, we were talking about that. Um, the lines of people that were lined up at that event uh, were just absolutely amazing. I have some of the pictures on the, the website about that, but uh, I would love to get them back here to do a little bit more uh, with that. Uh, huge shout out uh, to Sergeant Hebert for sending um, somebody from the university, I can't remember her name, I got it in my notes down here someplace, um, about the beer gardens that they now have at the stadium. Um, what that does, and I think these are things that we have talked about as a group, uh, I think even before I was here, uh, they've never had the ability to do any sort of sponsorship advertising inside the stadium, where like Summit Beverage, for example, puts a sign up inside the stadium that says, you know, drink responsibly or, you know, um, call a taxi or, you know, find a sober ride home or something like that sponsored by Summit Beverage, because since they sell alcohol, that would be alcohol advertising in the stadium and they weren't allowed to do that. Well, now things have completely switched now that they have the beer garden inside the stadium and they can do that. So it might be something that we look to see if we can find some partnerships and sponsorships to get some advertising, some marketing, some, uh, you know, 
um, drive sober messages inside the stadium um, now. So that would be pretty cool. And I've started the ball rolling to get think twice into the beer garden. Um, so hopefully that'll be another way to uh, continue to expose our community to that sober driving message. Any questions on any of that stuff? Hey, Steve. Yeah. Just a thought. If you do have advertising in the stadium, it would be great if you could get some of the more prominent athletes to be spokespeople for that. Yeah, that, that would, uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, and of course I would love anything to do with the mascot, of course, being a former mascot myself, uh, I always like to do that, but yes, no, I, I absolutely 100% agree with you. Uh, if, if there's any way we can work some sort of deal out, um, cause I think that's who people are going to listen to most. Right. Right. Um, right. Yeah. I, I think you're spot on on that one. Um, okay. Let me see if I can pull up one. No, I'm not going to be able to do this on the fly. Um, so let me see if I can find it here. Okay, I'm going to put a link in the chat box for this. Uh, so McKenna, this is probably the thing that you're going to be most interested about uh, when it comes to Think Twice. So Think Twice has a sober sister designated driver program that they are um, introducing to universities, uh, specifically uh, sororities. Um, and McKenna, I can probably hook you up also with the DUI task force coordinator out of Bozeman. Um, she's the one that is currently starting this program in Bozeman with Think Twice. Um, but it's basically a, an entire program to ensure that uh, one, uh, people have a safe ride and, uh, and it's an entire responsible party program uh, for the sororities. Uh, so their entire mission, it just says, uh, is to keep members safe, accountable and connected to peers, regardless of the individual's financial uh, situation. Um, and it's just, uh, it's just an overall phenomenal program. And I love what Think Twice is, is doing um, with this to take it just a step further to make sure people are, you know, choosing to always drive sober and to always have a plan to be safe, um, regardless of the situation that they're in. So uh, I, I, I totally dig it. So McKenna, if you want to chat about this after the meeting, we can definitely talk about that. Uh, I've talked with Forrest a little bit about bringing this um, to the university here. Uh, and we just haven't got to that point of where we've been able to, uh, you know, hop in and have a discussion with anybody. So that's why I'm so glad you're on board here today um, with that. So check out that website and then uh, let's try to set up a time where we can maybe chat about it and maybe I can answer some questions or I can connect you with uh, uh, Forrest in Seattle about this as well. Any questions from anybody? Comments, thoughts, ideas? All right. And normally I would have like a screen share uh, where you guys could see all this. We could talk all about it, but uh, you know, six minutes before the meeting, I don't have time to <laughs> get all that stuff uh, loaded up. So. Uh, but that was going to be our big presentation today was uh, about Think Twice uh, on there. So uh, last meeting, we talked a little bit about the Drive Safe Missoula billboard ideas. Uh, I'm going to be uh, talking with Kevin Dusko from the state uh, here a little bit later uh, during our uh, statewide meeting um, not too long ago. Um, one of the things I never even thought about was 
our funding is specifically for alcohol um, offenses only for you know DUIs related to alcohol. Our funding has not been related to drug driving. So uh, with that, if we make a billboard that talks about alcohol and THC of sorts, uh, we may be a little bit of out of compliance as far as our funding source goes. Um, he did say something this last meeting. I need to get clarification on that, but we might still be able to do this. I just want to let you all know on that. So I got to get some clarification um, on that to see if this is even going to be possible um, as far as uh, DUI task force money is related. Any questions on that? Excellent. Uh, and then uh, Jennifer uh, or Kevy, uh, please feel free to hop in. Uh, we talked a little bit about this earlier uh, related to Buckle Up Montana uh, with the CPS class. It's on May 17th and May 20th. Uh, Sergeant Hebert, how many people do you plan on sending? that come across? Um, no. Uh -uh. Two to the tech class. Two. Okay. So that would put uh, a total of 10 slots taken. Uh, I believe there's 15 openings. So is that right, Kevin? So yes. I did talk I to Tracy yesterday and she said that um, they did get the two signed up. So there are the 10 slots that are already taken. And just because of the number of students, it's kind of best to have an even number rather than an odd number. So it sounds like Tracy's going to try to open it up to 16 students total. And so there are going to be the one additional slot. So we're going to have six more slots that'll be open for that class. Oh, excellent. Excellent. That's great. That's great. So if you happen to know anybody uh, that's interested in this training, uh, and I think Jennifer, if I'm correct, uh, they could be from anywhere in the state. Uh, and are, are you paying for like travel and hotel and stuff like that, if that's the case? So what we have available, if anybody is traveling from around the state to attend it, for our students, we have a $225 student stipend if they reside more than 50 miles away from the training location. So this year for fiscal year 2022, we've actually offered eight different CPS courses throughout the state. And so we're trying to make it to where the students aren't going to have to travel that much that they're able to find a course that is close to them. But we definitely encourage people to go to the courses when they're available and if they have the time from their work that they can take but we do have that $225 student stipend that is available if they are traveling more than 50 miles excellent excellent so if you happen to know somebody in superior if you happen to know somebody Sealy lake uh hamilton whatever the case may be rolf i'm i'm, I'm thinking that uh an invitation to send a student or two should be sent to Seth Bodner at the university. Uh, they have married students that come in with children. They have the Curry Health Center. They have uh, <clears throat> social work students. Uh, they have a police department. So there's any number of individuals that might benefit from it uh, at the university. And Steve, I know in talking with Kira, we also offer scholarships uh, to individuals to help pay to attend those classes. So um, our scholarships are limited to paying for the cost of the actual class. Uh, but if there were uh, one or two individuals who were interested in attending the Missoula or um, any within our reach, which is Western Montana. So any of the CPS trainings that were going to be happening here in Western Montana, um, they could always get a hold of us here at the Foundation for Community Health and through Safe Kids Missoula, we may be able to pay for a couple of people to attend the class as well. 
Excellent. Excellent. And I just put the link to the uh, PDF uh, for the class that will have all the information on there. Uh, and what that is, uh, it shows that Charmel is the lead instructor on this PDF, but uh, Tracy Kiesel from Helena will be the one that will be teaching this class. So. Any other CPS seatbelt things, Jennifer? Um, the only other thing I can kind of think of is Wendy does have that class that she's going to be offering for special needs. So maybe that's something that you'd like to hit on real quick. That way, if anybody knows someone that might be interested in going to that or get them added. I think she only has 25 seats that are available for that training, but it's a good opportunity for anybody who wants to get very in depth with the CPS and the special needs. And that's June 1st and June 2nd. Is that right? Correct. Uh, that'll be up in Kalispell. Um, I can send out the information to everybody. Rolf, I saw that you unmuted. Is that something that you're yeah, interested I, in? I, I've, I've got a question. Okay. Um, given that we have a NICU unit here and the hospital, St. Pat's has uh, a, a birthing center. Um, have any or how many people from Missoula are qualified with that training? So for the Jennifer would might might know. You know, that is actually a great question. I understand where you'd be curious about that. The best place to go to be able to find the certified techs within your area would definitely be the Safe Kids website. Right now, currently, we have 233 certified technicians that are across the state, and we also have 15 active instructors. But as far as within that direct area, I'm not sure on, I don't have those numbers right in front of me or readily available, but across the state, we do have 233, and I do know your area has a decent amount, but we are also having that training that is going to be coming up here. So hopefully we'll have 15 additional ones that'll be certified so there's lots of assistance that are available but safe kids is a fantastic place for people to be able to go to to be able to find a certified tech or else they could always just contact steve himself and steve could give you a list of all the techs within the area or if you would like i can get that looked into and i can look up the i don't know if it's a radius that you're wanting or a certain mileage or what area it is that you want precisely, Rolf, but I could get you a list of all the techs in that area as well. Well, I'm, I'm a tech and I get that list. So I have, I have that list. I okay. was wondering specifically about the special needs for medical uh, medical needs. Uh, oh, I understand. Children. I apologize. Um, uh, this is actually the first time that the course has been offered here in Montana. I think Wendy said in like 10 to 15, 12 years. So it's been a really long time since we've actually even offered the course here in Montana. And so we do not have, we have very limited individuals that are actually certified to work directly with the special needs. Um, but once we get that completed, I think that both is Tracy and Wendy both certified on it right now, Steve, do you know, or do we have so, anybody in Montana that really is? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say those would probably be the only two people. Uh, and then maybe Lonnie Hutchinson still, if she was. Uh, but if they haven't had the class here in 10 years, I don't know if the special needs needs to be um, renewed every you know, couple of years like the, right. the standard one does. I'm not 100% sure. And My question is, is based on the fact that if there is one class in Kalispell, there is. And if there aren't anybody, isn't anybody from Missoula going, then I would consider going. But if a medical professional, a nurse or, or, or one of the people affiliated with community or St. Pat's, uh, what was to do that, I wouldn't take up a valuable space. But if they need, if you need somebody in the area, and because we have the NICU, I would consider going up for that. 
Awesome. Um, do you have Wendy's contact information? Because what I would suggest in that aspect is you talk directly with her because she's going to know who she has all registered for the course prior to the course actually taking place. And she could give you the detailed information on where they're located at and if there is anybody from the hospital or your surrounding area taking it. So that way, if there isn't, it'd be fantastic to have you attend it and be able to get that knowledge in your area. Yeah, that's all I was thinking is, is I'm not affiliated with a hospital, but I, I'd be willing to, to do it if I wasn't taking up a valuable space for somebody who really was close or closely affiliated with that uh, need. So, Steve, oh, could you just make sure that Ralph has Wendy's contact information and that way he yeah. could contact her directly and discuss that enrollment? Yeah, I've seen, yeah. I've got the email on my on my inbox so i will just go down to the inbox and contact her thank you yeah Perfect. it's her number is also on the flyer that i just posted in the comment section too so and i too think um that would probably be a training that either myself or kira or both of us would be attending um just because we are here in safe kids with in missoula um and i do know that kira is um currently sitting and they do have a um with the, the state office, the Safe Kids state office, and with, I know there's others involved, um, there is a special needs card seat um, kind of work group um, that is meeting right now to address some, some of the needs that we found, um, especially here because we work with Community Medical Center and we're on campus. Uh, lately, the, we have the loaner programs for like the DONO and that, um, but sometimes it just does not work. And so I know for our organization, we're also looking at purchasing two of the, um, Kira told us that like the lay flat um, beds that we can, or the, um, what did she call them? She's the so much vests. better at this and she's on a different one. Yeah, the, the vests. Um, and so we'll actually be looking at purchasing those and having those for loaners as well. So I do know that there has been some information given and that both the Kira with the Safe Kids Montana, as well as myself with Safe Kids Missoula have kind of been looped into that or looking at that um, training and seeing if we can't one or both of us getting trained as well. Yeah, it uh, definitely was something that uh, I'm interested in doing. However, I think with the uh, the, the current medical situations here uh, at home, uh, I'm not able to leave for the two days. So um, I, I uh, unfortunately won't be able to make it up there um, for that. But yeah, uh, hopefully we'll we'll get some some people there, and um, I appreciate you guys exploring that option. So. Any other comments, questions, requests, updates? All right. I think the last thing I have, uh, of course, this is a uh, Super Bowl weekend that's coming up. Uh, I'll uh, be working on a, uh, uh, a blog post related to that. Uh, and it's specifically going to be tied to uh, the Super Bowl and buckling up. Uh, I know there's always a big push on, you know, making sure that people have sober rides and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, I'm going to do a slightly little different twist. And, and uh, I don't remember if it was Pam or Janet or somebody like that from the uh, Department of Transportation asked me about uh, something with seatbelts in the Super Bowl. I was like, hmm, I'll come up with something. So uh, I'm going to be working on that uh, shortly after this meeting. Uh, so if you could do me a really big favor. Uh, I'll send out the link to everybody via email uh, to the blog post. Uh, if you could share that on your social media, whether it's your organizations or your individual social media, uh, that would be extremely helpful. Uh, when we do that, the hits to the Drive Safe Missoula website just skyrocket. And then people get to see the other services that we offer. Uh, the number one spot that most people go to outside of the, the main homepage uh, on the Drive Safe Missoula site is related to child passenger safety. Uh, so our car seats, the number one place that people go to, 
Um, occasionally a blog post here or there is, uh, is a top one for a, a, a short period of time, but overall uh, the car seats is it. But helping share that information with everybody um, means a lot and helps get that information out um, to everybody. So I'll try to send that email out as soon as I get that done. It might not be uh, until tomorrow, but I'll, uh, I'll get on to that shortly after this meeting here. So um, with that, any other final thoughts, requests, comments? Hearing none, I say go have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here.